so when I ran into you yesterday or the day before or whatever it was, I'm losing track of time now. Uh, one of the really big news items from the MD Anderson is the so-called moonshot. And I thought it would be fascinating for the folks at home to know more about this. You've got a lot of PR about it, but tell us a little bit about the moonshot that the MD Anderson is working on. Yeah, the moonshot actually is a really exciting initiative. And I have to say, um, uh, very bold, very uh, um, driven in that, you know, as a team, uh, a large number of people have been put together for each disease site to internally compete at MD Anderson, to select out diseases where we feel we can genuinely make an impact over the next 10 years and improve outcomes. So the term moonshot, mm -hmm. yeah, you're too young to remember this. But I, <laughs> I, I hear something I about going to the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember when President Kennedy mm -hmm. said by the end of the decade, I'm not even sure Todd was alive back then either, but anyway, uh, I remember very well when President Kennedy said, by the end of the decade, we're going to put a man on the moon. And so that's, I think, where this is all coming that's from. That's exactly it was a right. very bold effort. Exactly I mean, people right. People were just like, wow, and we did it. Yeah. We actually did it. So is that, is that, that part of the derivation that, of all that's this? That's definitely, you know, I think having definite timelines and a pressure that already exists in our minds because we want to make a difference yep. rapidly. However, recognizing that we need to have a very systematic approach to figure out what is feasible short term, what is feasible and will genuinely impact outcomes is really critical. So nope. in this case, what we did is um, we put together a moonshot team that's focused on the women's cancers and actually this is a combination with the gynecological oncologists and the breast cancer team and we're focusing on two diseases that are similar at a molecular level okay. serious ovarian cancer yep. and triple negative breast cancer yep. and I think many of you know this but triple negative breast cancer refers to a breast cancer t t subtype where there's no estrogen receptor, no progesterone receptor, and no HER2 receptor. And this is very relevant because now we've made you know, significant progress in two, the other two major subtypes of breast cancer. The hormone receptor positive, so estrogen receptor or progesterone receptor positive patients derive benefit from estrogen receptor targeted therapies right. and there's several of them and we're making uh, significant progress in figuring out who needs additional therapy, what kind of therapy and for HER2 positive cancers right. there's been a large amount of progress made with multiple new drugs actually going into um, the clinic recently. However, the triple negative breast cancer patients unfortunately have a more aggressive type and we don't have a specific targeted therapy to offer yeah, them. Funda, how, I, and I'm not sure I can answer mm -hmm. this question mm -hmm. myself, but how did we sort of stumble upon the fact that ovarian at the molecular level and triple negatives can have some real similarities to Yeah, it. so there were some components that we were already aware of, but I think over the last couple of years, one of the <laughs> things that really highlighted this was, for example, the TCGA mm -hmm. effort. Uh, many of you may have seen a lot of press over the, uh, the series of papers that came out of this large consortium looking at the molecular characteristics of tumors. And this is a very important NIH initiative. And uh, recently, when they published the breast cancer molecular characterization, they highlighted again the fact that there's a lot of commonality between triple negative breast cancer at a molecular level and uh, the uh, serious ovarian cancer. And as you also know, many of the BRCA patients yes. are also <clears throat> triple negative, aren't they? Yeah, so that's, yeah. A very, there, that's another very important link. Right. So strategies where we can better characterize and identify patients that have a, a, a hereditary component of this will help us um, better prevent and maybe better treat those patients. So that's another area we're actively working together with a gynecological okay. group to routinely screen for you know, genetic alterations. I, I'm, I'm confident that people at home are sitting there applauding, standing, jumping out of their chairs over your effort. <laughs>